If you are involved in any type of foreclosure action as a borrower, you are very likely the victim of a very serious crime. And praise the Lord. My name is Jason Werner. I work in the financial services industry for more than five years. I've also been involved in multiple foreclosure lawsuits as a defendant. Of course, sued the banks. Uh, let me just give you an idea of, of what's going on and what I learned in the banking industry, okay? Many people right now are wondering, hey, why won't this bank take my payments? You know, uh, why can't they modify this? You know, many people out there are thinking that there's a lot of deadbeats who just don't want to pay their bills. Um, so there's all kinds of propaganda being thrown out there. And I, I can't believe now, you know, today's what, the 27th of January, 2013, and I'm now finally talking about the foreclosure fraud, and yet I've done so many other videos about the bank's fraud, and I haven't done anything specifically related to foreclosure fraud. Uh, listen, the bank suing you or threatening to take your home through a non-judicial foreclosure process it has literally next to nothing invested in this alleged note upon which they're trying to foreclose with the attached mortgage. Okay, um, they use this note, they go to court, hey, this person didn't pay it, we're going to enforce our note through using this mortgage to steal your property. It's, it's an it's a identity theft that started really be, before uh, origination of the, the loan, okay? Um, well, most of you don't realize it, but you're, you're, you're uh, robo-signers. I know you've heard that term before with regard to these banks hiring people at, you know, 12, 13, 15 bucks an hour to sit down and sign papers and act like they know what's going on in this and they're gonna attest to them being a vice president and they know that the person defaulted on the mortgage for loan or whatever. Well, you're, you're a robo-signer too. I work in the industry, what happens is, in origination, you want to go buy a house and you sign off all these papers, you know, 50, 100 papers, 150, or whatever it is. Did you actually read all those papers? If you really knew what that note said, would you really have signed it and under fully understood that? And the bank does. Uh, when I say they have nothing invested in this thing, I, I mean, when, when, and, and origination, when I worked as a loan officer and processor, and, worked with the underwriters. The, the big thing is the appraisal. Obviously, you gotta know how much a house is worth, if it's worth it the bank for to lend the money, or they're lending it through other entities. But here's the deal. We use that appraisal, send it over to a company called, I used to work a lot with a company called Assured Guarantee. There's also companies like MGIC and PMI. Um, well, a, a short guarantee, for example, is owned by AIG. You know about the bailout with AIG. The originating companies insure the, um, the loan. They, they, they get derivatives all over the place and they, they, they back themselves up. They, they can then, oh, we have nothing to lose then, okay? they really want to back themselves up as much as possible so that they have nothing to lose. And it's true, they, they've, they've got nothing to lose. Uh, not only have they got people to help them out, but the originator, like Quicken Loans or Crooks, um, Third Federal are not Crooks, but they, they originate a lot of mortgage loans. Obviously, uh, Bank of America, you know, any mortgage brokerage, Chase, uh, Wells Fargo, these are all Crooks, okay? Uh, white collar criminals, they are. Uh, it just goes on, BB&T, SunTrust, Regions. I apologize if I left out any of you white collar criminals. I know you work very hard at it. You're in trouble. <laughs> They're borrowing the money through usually either Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, okay? And of course there's FHA and VA loans too, whereby those are just backed by their full faith and Insurance, actually, of the United States government. Not necessarily credit, but that's another issue. So, why aren't you wondering, why aren't they modifying anything with you? 
You're begging for a settlement. I've been there before. Okay, these banks are going to get you in court and they're going to try to play a delay game with you. They don't want you to get involved in any kind of discovery. They could lose the whole thing right there if they get into discovery. Oh, what's the relationship with this company as it relates to the company that's suing you? They're not their property, proper party pursuing you. What's the deal with your mortgage here? Why does it say, you know, for example, um, MERS? Why is MERS on this thing? MERS will be the proper party in interest if they're going to, you know, but the thing is, who's MERS? The note doesn't even have MERS name in it. Sometimes you do see MERS name in there. Mortgage electronic registration system. What, what's, the, what's the deal with this thing, these guys, you know? But uh, you, you know, when you sign these papers, you, you didn't get proper disclosure about all this stuff. There's just all kinds of rates and lies and everything else that go along with it. The bank knows, the, the loan officer, the processor, even the underwriters all the times, we don't even know. Even the secondary market, which is that's where it's sold and everything, we don't even know the details of the stuff that's going on behind closed doors. These notes are sold before you, I mean, it's already, you know, FedEx or UPS over to, you know, the title company, but they've already gotten everything taken care of behind everything, okay? Which is all fine and dandy, but it gets into a serious issue with regard to what is the relationship going on here with the different companies? How do you settle anything? How do you enter into any kind of modification agreement when, you know, you're not even working with the proper party in interest? They have no, they have no right to... Uh, issue any kind of modification pursuant to the <laughs> pooling and servicing agreement, and I'm getting into all other issue here. You have pooling and servicing, all these loans get thrown into a big pool and everything, you know. Asset-backed securities and, and uh, all that. It's, it's a mess. Basically, what, what you need to understand is these, these, these banks, when they go to, uh, banks, whatever, uh, you know, trust companies, whatever, when they go to sue you or, you know, in the non-judicial states, they don't, they don't sue, but what happens is they, um, they're looking for fees. It's all they care about. Okay, the bank is. The attorney, they just want to get it to sale so they can make some bucks. That's it. All right? You know what I'm saying? Everybody has their own deal on it. They all have their own desires in this thing, okay? They all have their own fingers in the, in the, in the pie. And then, of course, you have the you know, title company. They're looking to get the money out of it, and then... You got the the, uh, the judges who just want to get the money for their courts as quickly as possible, or their records departments, or whatever, or for their county, whatever the case might be. You're up against it. I'm I'm here to tell you, beware. Watch out for these attorneys too. They're dangerous. I've talked to many of them. Obviously, you're California, Florida, and we're here in Ohio. It's um. They'll tell you, oh, we can modify this. We can modify that. And they find out, oh, well, I, I can't even do that. Or they just, they're just trying to get your money just to get you in, you know. Or they'll have these monthly things whereby you pay like 500 bucks a month and they'll just defend your case and they'll play a delay game too. But guess what? The bank's playing the same exact delay game. Uh, you just you got to watch yourself. Uh, these, these banks are not your friend. They are indeed your enemy. The attorneys are your enemy as well. Speaking from experience, you know, I was sued by FDIC for example, the mother of this whole thing. Uh, you cannot negotiate with these, these crooks. It's like negotiating with terrorists. You're trying to negotiate with Al-Qaeda and it's like, just look at, look at HSBC and, and even Chase and all these other Goldman Sachs. These, these, these companies are doing business with drug cartel <laughs> all throughout the world. Uh, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, this goes on. UBS, okay? And of course, UBS had a lot of assets. Uh, you got to pray and seek the Lord on this. And, you know, who am I to know? I mean, I, I've been through this. I've, I've played the delay game, being pulled around in the little delay game, and I'm, I'm trying to, you know, hurry up, let's go, let's go, let's go. What's, what's going on here? It's just, it's just settle this thing, you know? They, they don't want to settle. They know what they have, okay? You know, the, the, the banks know that they wouldn't have brought, look, they wouldn't have brought this thing to court or in a new non-judicial state. They wouldn't have brought it to uh, the records department to get the eviction and get the sheriffs involved if they didn't feel like they were going to get somewhere with it, okay? They know that the, the, the judges are going to be on their side. It's, it's a big game of propaganda whereby these, these so-called judges, most of them are whores, they're, they're paid off, you know? Um, 
they're just gonna collect money for their own system. You see what I'm saying? So just just remember what you, you gotta know what you're up against. I'm a Christian. I cried out to God. My family and I we were just you know, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Yeah, you can sit back and say, okay, I'm gonna wait upon the Lord. I'm gonna wait upon the Lord and let the Lord deal with it. Well, you know. Faith without works is dead. You have to have some works involved in this thing. So, I, I do call you to action. A few things what you could look for. All my cases, you know, the people lied in court and everything. Definitely look at the affidavits. Do they make sense? Read what they're saying to you, okay? And they're, they, they print this stuff out, and they put ink in everything, and, you know, comes now, whatever. They're trying to make it all look pretty and everything. These are, you know, false statements about how you're missing your payments. The reality is the bank was very likely the default before this, you know, alleged foreclosure action even became an issue, okay? Uh, they're the deadbeat who's, you know, defrauding the United States federal government, first of all. And of course, you got other investors are defrauding, of course, shareholders is another issue too. Uh, you're going to see these, these affidavits, I, I've never seen an honest one at all. And it's difficult to depose even the person who, the affiant, the person who wrote, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I have personal knowledge that this person is defaulted. I've read the computer transcript to see that this person made payments and helped a lot. I, I, and I'll tell you right now, if you don't have full knowledge of this contract upon which you entered and you fully understand and you don't know who you're actually paying and who's all involved what are you paying who are you paying don't pay because now you're involved in their little Ponzi scheme I worked in the industry okay we don't care if you the loan officer the processor the underwriter they have they don't lose anything if you don't make any payments or anything why? Because the bank has, has it, they can burn this whole thing down and still make money on it. What do I mean by that? All right. Um, boy. Uh, you know, I talk about how you have the, the, the mortgage insurance. Well, for example, let's say if you've been in a car accident, I mean, not too many people have been in a really bad car accident. Maybe like a million dollar car accident whereby, you know, the damages were like uh, 20,000 to the car and then you know, the body was totaled. I was, you know, 900 and, you know, well, well more than 900. Let's just say it's a total of a million dollars, okay, everything combined. The rule is across the board, the insurance company can be sued for, well, they've got their, you know, uh, they'll, you know, maybe they, they got, you know, a quarter million dollars you can go after, okay, and they've got that already. Well, you can say, well, guess what, the, the, the defendant, Sally Jones, or Joe Smith has, you know what, they've got a house worth five million dollars, I'm going to go after all of it. I'm gonna go for a million dollars from from the insurance company, a million dollars from the the defense. Well, no, you, you can only go after a million bucks. That's what the damages were, compensatory, punitive, everything, whatever whatever the case is. Um, so you got quarter million dollars from the, the insurance company. You've already accepted fault for it. Okay, we'll give you your quarter million dollars. Shut up, be happy. You can't go for more than seven hundred. $50,000 extra from the defendant, specifically from them, to get a judgment and do whatever you need to do to get that money. You, you just can't. Across the board. Well, with the regard to the foreclosure lawsuits, what happens is you get these... Uh, oh, boy. Final judgment, $120,000. The original loan was maybe for $100,000. dollars been paid down to like ninety. To one or something like that, into. Um, but anyway, the final judgment was one hundred twenty thousand dollars. The bank has already got the ninety one, ninety two thousand dollars, whatever it was, already paid off because they can just go ahead and file their claim with their insurance company. 
a short guarantee, MGIC, PMI, whatever. They can't file that claim until after they buy the house at auction, which is why you see the banks buying so many houses at auction. Of course, they have the money for it too. That can stop title right there. Any issues, you know, with regard to that's in their mind, they think that that stops the issue with any card to any issues of, uh, you know, uh, I, I call it salvage title, you know, you know, clouded title is what they call it, okay, but then they can go in, they, they bought the property, okay, uh, they didn't buy it back, they never owned it in the first place, they didn't repossess it, this is bank propaganda, they didn't, re, they didn't repossess it, they didn't own it, they either possessed it or they bought it, or whatever the case is, so now they own this, okay. But they've already got their loan paid off. But here's the deal. Bought it for maybe you know hundred one hundred ten thousand dollars. What's the judgment? Hundred twenty thousand. Whatever judgment it may have been. Um, they maybe bought it at auction for sixty five thousand dollars. Okay. And now they're coming for you for the difference, which is you know less than sixty thousand dollars, maybe fifty or whatever. Um, it's not right because they've already been paid off the ninety ninety one thousand dollars through their insurance claim. So they're going, you know, ninety ninety one thousand they get for it. Plus they get an extra fifty thousand from you know whether it be forty five or fifty five, whatever the case is, depending on how much the final judgment was, they get that from you as well. So they're getting way way over on this stuff, and you keep wondering why it makes it get so much profit. Um, that's that's all hidden though. So. Understand that they, they don't have much to lose to foreclose on you. That's why they're doing this. And that's why they don't care to modify with you. You're thinking to yourself, oh, why don't they just modify? They never get some payments out of this. Or principal reduction. What's a real principal, first of all? Oh, we'll knock off $60,000 of your balance. I saw one that they got like $200,000 knocked off of the balance. Another one, you know, 100000 knocked off the balance. Or second mortgage. Thank you very much, Bank of America. You knocked off my second mortgage. Or, thank you very much, Chase, or Wells Fargo, or other criminals. They don't care. They want you to think that you know, the real principle is half a million or 700,000, when in reality it's less than that. They, they just, they just, it's, a, it's a mind game, it's a propaganda. But uh, don't, don't, be, don't be fooled by this. And these attorneys, you know, foreclosure defense attorneys, attorneys who get it, you know. Definitely you need to review the paperwork. If you see something that looks suspicious, talk to your friends about it. You know, the Bible says, um, oh my God, in Proverbs, you know, it says, um, much wisdom is in the council of, in the multitude of counselors, okay? Much wisdom is in the multitude of counselors, something like that. You know, and, and also definitely, I, I urge you to get a forensic audit whereby, you know, a person who has however many years of experience to examine your paperwork. The paperwork that you signed in origination, of course you're gonna have issues with securitization and then even in servicing too, to see all the paperwork that you, you know, okay, well you made your payments, they had modified and they, then, they, then they changed their mind about how they wanted to, you know, not foreclose, and didn't foreclose on you anyway. You need to have experts review this stuff. Uh, then another issue is, well, great, well, how do I know this expert is real? How, how do I know they're not gonna rip me off? But you gotta get all over this, you know. The Bible says, love your enemy. And I'm, I'm finishing with this. Love your enemy. Loving your enemy doesn't mean, okay, I'm just going to let the Lord take care of this and leave it alone. And let him deal with it, right? Yeah, but you know what? You're required to love your enemy. And that doesn't mean you're always going to ignore this enemy. I'm going to ignore the, the attorneys. I'm going to ignore them because I can't you know, deal with them or I, I, I just going to let the Lord deal with it. Or, you know. No. Love your enemy. You need to acknowledge that, number one. Look at what, you know, Jesus, he loved Satan. Oh, love his enemy. How do you do that? You know, he was tempted. And, um, I'll give the whole world. And, and, you know, Jesus acknowledged it by name, Satan. Get behind me. He, you know, there's, there's other, other, other issues, too, you know, what happened. But, I mean, acknowledge him by name. Thank them for, you know, being delivered to your hands. God can get you through this. Heathens can get through this. Non-Christians, okay? Cry out to the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at me. And I'm, I, even in my case, they might look like they're done. They're not done yet. In most cases, you truly need to file criminal charges against 
the attorney and the fake witnesses and the bank, whomever else is involved in this stuff. They can't get away with this. If we have laws, they must be enforced. I'm telling you.